Good evening, this is Kuro. Got a tier 10 game in my Yu Yang. Going over the matchmaking, I've got double Des Moines, uh, Zhao and Smolensk, a lot of close in firepower for uh, supporting the enemy DDs, which are double gearing Shima Haragumo. I'm running a radar configuration Yu Yang with a maximum gun build. Um, trying to do everything I can to help this ship's um, get some useful gun DPM uh, so I can try to try to pick some of these fights with these destroyers and uh, basically try to uh, eliminate the D enemy DDs basically pave by doing that um, help my team win the vision war and you know ideally pave our way to victory uh, this game's gonna have a lot of communication with me to my team uh, you're gonna start to see it here very shortly uh, the reason being with the six second duration um, rendering delay that's currently with the radar consumable you don't get a lot of time with uh, with your radar for the your team to to get some uh, shots in here so you can see I'm pinging the map I'm letting my team know hey this is where RPF is pointing I want you guys to start thinking about something here <coughs> but even more importantly look at my team's positioning I've got a lot of ships that are pushing up they're not that far from me they're pushing, they're, they're being aggressive, um, and that's, that's telling me, okay, if you guys want to be aggressive, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to get something for you to shoot at. So, I'm going to, I'm going to type in the, the chat, I'm going to let them know, hey, I'm going to radar once I get, get up to this island. <coughs> got multiple uh, team members pinging back and it's perfect stock picked up the shima inside the radar range I'm gonna pop speed boost and I'm rushing at him to uh, keep him inside the radar range um, my team can now shoot at him boom just like that third of the shima's HP is gone I did pick up the uh, the gearing uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw some shots out on the Shima, try to get a little extra damage in on this guy. I do need to slow down to avoid Shima Torps. <coughs> Gearing shot at me, and uh, that's a side bonus that this guy's going to be spotted a little bit longer, and my team's going to be able to dish some damage out on him. Now this was almost a textbook radar Yu Yang engagement. I came in, I picked up the DDs on the radar, I uh, ended up baiting, you know, one of them to shoot at me, so he got detected a little longer. And then you look at the trade. I haven't lost anything. This Shima's lost at least a quarter of his HP, probably closer to a third. Um, and this gearing lost almost 25% of his HP just in that initial engagement this is how you you win that uh, destroyer fight with uh, with Yu Yang you want to rely on uh, your teammates getting that fire support in there and uh, that's what you have to do uh, because you no longer have guns that can be relied upon to win fights against most DDs you have to to play chill now I'm gonna go on ahead and repush this again I know the the shima smoked <coughs> I want to poke around here and see if I can pick up one of these DDs right back in here and I'm doing that because I've again you look at my team okay they're still 
you look at the enemy DD support, they don't have that much in relation to me. I've got a lot of support, so get aggressive. Get up here, pick those fights. Okay, Des Moines pops up. That's not the, the best thing in the world. But I've got the Shema. Now, say what you will about, you know, the, the reload rate on... Uh, on Yu Yang, the the gun dispersion on these uh, on these guns is fantastic. Uh, in my experience, it's they I land shells more consistently with Yu Yang than I do gearing. I'd be very interested in seeing some of the the more hidden statistics behind uh, Yu Yang guns versus gearing guns. Um, that many volleys. That's three volleys. I've only dropped a single shell. Now, yes, it's under five kilometers, um, but that's still pretty good performance. Um, <coughs> now here, I'm going to use the profile of uh, Yu Yang to, to minimize the damage that I take. Just uh, kiting away, use that low stern. Just It's really hard to land shots on the stern of this on of this ship uh, it's really only this this front third of the ship that really is the best target to aim at and by kiting away you're denying the enemy team really the ability to really shoot at that so you know 700 you know 700,000 potential damage I still haven't lost 25% of my HP uh, again, gearing was spotted there shooting at me. He just lost, you know, looks like about a third of his HP now. Um, again, that's a trade in my favor. You know, I was able to, to help eliminate this Shimakaze. Uh, got another good chunking on the gearing. <coughs> but you look now, uh, look at the support situation between my ships here their ships here okay they've got their gearings you know way back right now um, so he's he's actually got better fire support than I do at this moment in time uh, he's back in in here somewhere with you know his Zhao, his Des Moines, Kerfer, Smolensk I don't I don't want to push and pick a fight in this situation just because it's it would be a bad trade for me he's got a lot more support close support than I do um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to uh, to try to pick a fight with uh, the gearing at this time with my radar what I'm seeing is this Malinsk that's popped up you can look you can see the sm okay he's smoking okay I don't want this guy to be able to sit and smoke and and farm my team I've thrown some torpedoes out here already on the curve first so I can't torp his smoke so I'm gonna ping him on the mini map let my team know hey this guy I'm gonna radar again get ready <coughs> there we go got him radared there's gonna be shots coming in on him here shortly just trying to stay outside of uh, concealment now they didn't get the best uh, damage on him but now the Smolensk, he's out of his smoke, he's shooting, he's going to be spotted a while. And uh, <clears throat> most importantly, this denies his ability to just sit and farm my team in smoke. Um, that was the, the main purpose of that, that radar use. Get this guy out of his smoke and moving so my team at least can shoot at this guy. throwing some torpedoes out there thinking that Kremlin might try to, to push um, now I do have concerns with this game and this is gonna be a 
this is where things are starting to go wrong. If you look right now, my team's doing really good. <clears throat> we've got two DDs down. Um, we've got their Kerr first low. We've got one of their Des Moines really low. Um, their Smolensk is chunked. Their gearing's, you know, chunked as well. Um, HP-wise, we're looking a lot better shape. However, map position, they're looking a lot, lot better than us. And the issue is they're Hindenburg, Des Moines, and they're gearing on this, on the 2-3 line. Uh, they're going to do some bad stuff to my team. Uh, my team just basically gave up the 2-3 line. Uh, the Kerfurst was the last ship to, uh, to leave there. And if you look... Um, you know, a lot of this is these two Shimmas. What are these guys doing here um, for my team? They're not they're not providing any additional vision because I've consistently been in front of them. I'd, I'd really like to see their spotting damages, uh, things like that, because uh, they seem to, every time I look around, I see torpedoes from, you know, behind me passing passing by going to the enemy team that's telling me they're running 20 kilometer torps and it's <sighs> you're unlikely to have very consistent games with 20 kilometer torps um you know it, it is what it is but you know this is basically just a ball looking to be farmed and this is a cr this is a crossfire this is this th the enemy's position is what breaks this <clears throat> you know my team's position is fine if the enemy team just tries to shove right into them right from uh, directly north my team's got ideal position to to deal with that um, but this out here is going to break the back of my team quickly. <clears throat> now, I do also want to point right here that this this time of the game, I'm I'm having issues with uh, my ability to influence the game because they still have a pretty healthy gearing out there. He's got a lot of close support with this Kremlin here. I have to be mindful. He can put a ton of AP into me uh, at these sorts of ranges if I get detected. Um, this Des Moines, I'm only 1.4 kilometers off his radar range. This Zal, uh, if I get spotted again, you know, this is a nasty crossfire between the Kremlin and the Zal. Um, I could eat a lot of damage here, so I have to be mindful, keep my distance, and... Uh, just uh you know keep trying to play the long game but the issue is with the long game is your torpedoes you're not getting you're not going to be getting the, the level of torpedo damage that you need to and that's going to play a factor in this game <clears throat> you know i i can't i can't hang here with this out pushing like that i i have to assume that this gearing's pushing into me and uh, that can cost me. Now, the other thing, my team is not finishing low health targets. Uh, this Des Moines, he's under 800 HP. Uh, he's going to be 757 HP. He's going to be able to get away and disengage. Uh, my team instead is focusing on this Zhao. They're going to hammer this Zhao down to 2k HP. Smolensk eats a torpedo, 522 HP. <clears throat> All of these are ships I can't shoot at. I don't have the gun range. Nobody's finishing those targets off. I'm, I'm risking uh, pushing up here because the Zhao's been, been hammered at this point. He's fleeing for his life. It's unlikely he's going to want to turn all of his guns to shoot at me. I know the gearing's right here. I know he's right here. <clears throat> but again, if if you look at my team's position, 
I've got a Des Moines kiting away. I've got a Minotaur kiting away. I've got a Smolensk that, yes, this the Smolensk could shoot, but is that going to be enough DPM to get, to get you know, the trade that I need with my last radar? So I'm, I'm hesitant to use my radar right here because my team's not showing, you know, an aggressive, we're looking to, we're, we're pushing, we're looking for something to shoot. My team is disengaging at the moment, so I'm going to disengage as well. This Yamato, I would love to be able to push in and torp this guy, but I'm not going to be able to pick this fight with the Des Moines on, or, or with uh, this gearing with my gun DPM compared to, you know, the gearing DPM plus, you know, the the gearing support. Again, you look at my my supporting DDs, you know, Shima, Shima, you know, they're not providing a lot. I, I eventually do find the, uh, the gearing. He's smoking up right now. Pretty sure he knows that I'm radar. I'm gonna go ahead and pop radar here. See if my team can't get a good trade on him. But and you can see the effect that this crossfire is gonna have. Uh, you know, I've got the Kremlin shooting at me. I've got these guys shooting at me. There's the Hindenburg shooting at me from the front. Um, you know, I can't, in this position, I can't, you know, maintain this position because every time I get spotted, that's too many angles for me to be shot at. I'm going to take significant damage if I keep trying this. Throwing some, uh, again, make a, at these distances, it's Make-A-Wish torpedoes. This Yamato's kiting away. Uh, can't torp the, the Kremlin because he was, you know, hugging behind this island. Very unlikely to land torpedoes on him. Uh, and then I'm starting to get pinched out of position by this Des Moines who's pushing this island smartly. The further this Des Moines pushes in here, you draw that 10 kilometer radar circle and it, it just pushes me more and more out of position. I want to be in this position because uh, I've got better torpedo angles out here. More influence over, over the battle. You can see that 700 hit point Des Moines survived. Uh, the 500 hit point Smolensk survived. They've got their repairs off. Now they're shoving down here on the 9 line. And... Uh, <coughs> You know, this is all damage that my team should not be absorbing right now. They do finally put down the, uh, that Des Moines. Um, but, and this this is what I'm talking about. This Des Moines hitting this island is ugly for my team. You've got this Smolensk. He's been sitting here a while. His, you know, I'm assuming his smoke's old. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a lot of smoke deployed. Um, but I'm on the edge of the Des Moines radar range. He's behind me. That Des Moines could radar this Smolensk. And, I mean, you, you look at it. You got the, the Yamato Kerfurst shooting here. You've got the gearing, I believe, somewhere up in, uh, up in here. Uh, they could be, probably should have launched torps at the, uh, Smolensk smoke. You've got the uh, Des Moines and Hindenburg able to shoot here, plus plus the Zao. It's, I mean, crossfire all over the place. This guy, he can't stay there. He needs to move. And this, I, th I think, is one of the back-breaking situations for my team. This guy is a lot of DPM for my team. And uh, he's doing a good job shooting at, uh, you know, low health targets. That's what we really need. Okay, he's popped hydro, but, I mean, the danger is torpedoes and this radar. And it's, it's just going to come, you know, perfectly together. He's only going to start moving because his smoke's running out. And this, this is so ugly. 
I mean, here's the torpedoes. He sees them with hydro. But, I mean, the torpedoes, he's cross-fired. Torpedoes come in. The torpedoes are going to force him broadside to the Des Moines. As soon as that Des Moines clears that island, it's all over. Des Moines, has, Des Moines hasn't even radared. That's just really rough. Um, we did lose one of our Shimas here um, from the Des Moines and Smolensk that uh, were uh, so low HP. So we lost a, a DD out of, you know, two ships that should have been dead minutes ago. We're going to lose a, a Shima here. Um because he didn't he didn't pay attention to what I did I, I saw this trap coming in where he's gonna get squeezed out he's getting squeezed into the Kremlin into the gearing you can't you can't stop that and I mean that's that's what I'm talking about you can't let your team get flanked on this map or on any map you have to you have to hold your flanks particularly on standard battle um, I know everybody wants to just sit around their cap circle and just drive around in circles. He can't do it. Um, because the, the team that, that plays the flanks and gets the crossfire, they're going to they're gonna win most of these games. <clears throat> now here, um, my Kerfers did finally... We did get a battleship that finally did push back on the three line. And uh, it's cleared up the Hindenburg out there. It's pushed the Des Moines out of here. So at this point, we're flipping, you know, the, the flank on the enemy team. Uh, the problem is my team's position, they don't have crossfire. You've got this Montana that he's turning in this way. Uh, and he's going to try to push here. But if you look, where's the crossfire? I mean, that at most would be this uh, this position right here, where that's a fairly decent crossfire. Um, but really, this Yamato sh or this Montana should have spun back, kited this way, and that would have had the side benefit of this Molensk. Um, at this point, he he's this guy's pretty much playing very safe very opportunistic he's very little hp uh i would love to kill him uh but really my torpedoes are are really holding back these guys plus i don't want to let this gearing into the end of the cap um my minotaur is uh radar and not uh not smoke so i can't rely on him for a base of fire he basically is just going to be hitting and running um I mean, these, the Minotaur and the uh, Montana really should flank back this way. If we were able to, if they were able to finish off the, the Smolensk, uh, I could kind of hold back this push a little bit. And then as long as this Kerfers doesn't advance beyond this gap here, <clears throat> we got a real chance at, at winning this game uh, because we'll have the enemy team in a crossfire. I'll be able to keep all of these guys spotted for my team. These battleships should be able to deal big time damage to these targets. Um, it's just not gonna. It's just not gonna go that well, though. At this point, you know, things are starting to unravel with the team. Um, <clears throat> I'm letting my team know, hey, I think the gearing's right here in front of me. And I'm looking. I'm seeing if uh, if I maybe could get some torps on this cur first. And again, the Yamato's just not offering that good a broad uh, or torpedo angle. Honestly, I should have only dropped one set of torps there. Uh, my Minotaur does radar the gearing. 
and I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna jump in on this I we need kills enough of letting these you know low HP ships run around it and live and uh, we were able to get that that trade I'm gonna kite back out again use that low profile to try to avoid some of this focus fire that might come my way my torpedoes miss on the curve first and without torpedo tubes mod 3 again really long uh, reload on the torpedoes it, it is very punishing um, but I, I'm running reload mainly because you know I you got to do something to try to to try to push back these uh, enemy DDs you can't just rely on your radar alone I'm trying to tell this Kerfers stop stop you need to hold this position instead he wants to try to push this gap which that means he's gonna go 1v4 you know my Minotaur is not really in a position to, to help him at this point I'm making the the decision you know what I've got a couple options I can either push in uh, and you know maybe torp something here I do have a Des Moines radar out there somewhere um, I um, can try to pick up this uh, this kill on the Smolensk and I, I'm, I'm making the gamble right now that uh, these guys are far enough back they're kinda out of uh, the threat to, to pushing my team I'm expecting this Kerfers to, to push here uh, and I'm expecting to bump into this Smolensk you know somewhere out here so I'm, I'm taking the gamble and I'm gonna push out this way to see if I can pick up the kill on the Smolensk and, and uh, try to torp this curve first however this curve first is just chilling out behind this island and you know it's just it is what it is a Minotaur gets spotted Des Moines had pushed through the uh, the gearing smoke my Minotaur is going to go down. <coughs> my Kerfirst is uh, is kiting this Kremlin, and at this point, what all? It's too much HP for me to to pick this fight with this Des Moines. I need to have the Kerfirst shoot this guy. Um, so I'm I'm just kiting back. Uh, there's the Smolensk you know that's that's really rough uh, that uh, he happened to go all the way out there and I'm not able to wasn't able to pick that kill up um, where my my gamble to try to cut off the curve first and the Smolensk just kind of fell apart because this guy was all the way on the 10 line at I-10 um, but it happens. Uh, my curve first, I don't know what this guy's doing. Uh, turning, you know, his position here, this Des Moines just laughed and said, oh, you want to do that? I'm just going to keep this island between you and me, and I'm just going to go push into your base. And, you know, that's, that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, here, all I'm doing is, I know I've got 30 seconds left. I'm hoping that this curve first can do something about this Des Moines uh, but here very shortly I'm gonna have to shoot and there's the radar it's go time got 17 seconds left I was hoping to get a broadside on the Smolensk that's what I was holding my fire for Smolensk is gonna put me down here <coughs> I do get the shots to kill him in return, but that's the game. Um, really good beginning and middle to the game. Uh, the situation just fell apart with uh, their flanking Des Moines positioning, um, and really my inability to, to have a stand-up fight with, a, with that gearing. Um, it, you know, uh, you're just not going to win a, a trade against a, a gearing with this boat 
with the uh, the current situation with the guns. I do think about complementing the curve first because 2K base XP is a decent result on a loss. In the end, I, I opt not to because uh, he's, he got himself out of position and, you know, if he would have been able to get a shot in on the Des Moines, there's a, there's a decent chance I could have killed the uh, Smolensk and the Des Moines and those two ships down uh, if I could do it before we before I sunk could have won the, the game um, looking at some of the trades the uh, the gearing does out trade me a bit uh, and the reason is I because I've got less gun DPM than him and I don't have smoke I have to be really cautious about using my guns to, to pick fights with with the ship uh, if I would be able to have at least the same gun DPM at him, um, or even a little less, you know, uh, a 3.3 second, 3.2 second reload, um, you know, for, for the base reload would be, uh, it'd be a much better situation than, than where I'm at now. Uh, now, I mean, I'm running... You know, I even dropped superintendent for basic firing training really to get every bit of, you know, gun DPM out of the ship that I, I can. The only thing I'm not running is a legendary module because the legendary module concealment is just trash. Uh, I can't I can't act like a regular DD with the, the legendary module. That fixes the gun DPM situation, but you know, breaks the ship with uh, concealment where you can't, you're you're so reliant on your, your radar uh, that you can't behave like a, like a destroyer. Uh, you basically are, are like the Z-52 where you get, um, you're so reliant on your consumables, but unlike Z-52 where you can have over a two-minute hydro, you've got, you know, a very short duration radar and <clears throat> it just it's not gonna cut it um, so really I do think that war gaming and war gaming if you are listening to this uh, this video you can't do this with with destroyers destroyers they they're there's two critical balance points for destroyers uh, there's concealment and there's gun DPM. If you buff uh, a destroyer's DPM too much, above and beyond uh, other other peer ships, you have to roll back the concealment a little bit to give other destroyers a little bit of breathing room. Uh, for example, I believe Daring has too much DPM for its concealment at the moment. It really needs to be around 6.1, 6.2 kilometer concealment to really be balanced because at 6, at 6 kilometer concealment, daring just craps all over uh, gearing unless the gearing's forced into running the legendary upgrade uh, where it's going to basically sacrifice, you know, its gun DPM, its a part of its torpedo DPM in order to just survive in that atmosphere where you have darings running around that um i mean the the difference in concealment between 5.8 and 6. Point, uh uh 6 kilometers isn't much um you know it it's it's just too much on a on a ship like that you you take the same thing with uh you know Yu Yang you don't even have the option of, of legendary on this ship. If they wanted to drop the, the concealment for Yu Yang to 5.6 kilometers, this ship would be balanced as it as its guns currently sit. Um, but at 5.8 kilometer concealment, it's it's not. You know, there there's too many ships that you can just bump into that massive have massive firepower advantages over over you. Um, legendary uh, Grozovoy, you know, uh, Daring, even even Jutland and and some of these tier nine DDs, 
uh, will just pick you apart. And, you know, you, you shouldn't have a, a tier 10 DD that's uh, getting picked apart by, uh, by a, a, a tier 9 destroyer that's, you know, supposedly a hybrid destroyer along with it. Uh, you really need to start looking at, at some things. So, um, right now, this is, Yu Yang is probably one of the biggest sh tier 10 ships screaming for, for them to, to look at this again. And, um, I really hope that they, they look at this ship in the future. This, this ship for me, I had bought premium, uh, the permanent camo and all of this, how their handling of this ship, um, it, it completely turned me off to buying permanent camo. I, I haven't bought a permanent camo since, uh, because this ship is, it's unusable in its current configuration. The only reason I'm playing this ship, uh, for, for this game is because I'm farming oil for, uh, for my clan playing, uh, a Pan-Asian DD. And, uh, that's it. That's the only reason this ship gets brought out, uh, as far as I know, by anybody in my clan, is only for naval battles. Only when we, we absolutely need to try to ra knock out, you know, the Pan-Asian destroyers, that's it. And it, I, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how the, the stats are performing with this ship, because I just don't see this ship being competitive anymore. And it, you can't, you can't leave ships like that. Uh, out there you know you you have to keep the ships viable there has to be at least a one viable build for these ships and right now i i just don't see it with you yang i'm gonna go ahead and cut this video off before i rant all night about it um anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this game uh had a lot of had a lot of good stuff with uh you know uh radar destroyers how to use it, implement it, uh, how they kind of play. Uh, a lot of spotting damage this game, almost 140k. Um, you know, the the late game just fell apart because I wasn't able to uh, fight this gearing, you know, mano a mano, uh, with the the current situation for this ship, and that that means that I'm not able to uh, to push in and prosecute the torpedo attacks like I would with, you know, other ships. And that's that's just uh that's where this ship is broken. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good night. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. And I will talk to you guys later.